Hello, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. As consumers deal with high inflation, we're continuing to help you save money while dining out to cutting costs at the grocery store. But first, we are all thinking about our next vacation. So how can you find the best spring travel deals? Spring is in the air, and after years of missing out, college students and families are making spring break a priority this season with hotspots in Florida, the southwest, and south of the border at the top of the list, according to travel booking site Hopper. If you're headed to a very popular warm weather spring break destination, you should be booking your flight now. Travel costs are not immune to inflation. Hotel rates are up 64% from last year, and flights cost 20% more. But there are spring break deals out there. Hopper advertising $82 round-trip flights to Orlando from New York, Boston to San Diego for $190, and Newark round trip to Turks and Caicos for $260. But the clock is ticking. Families heading to vacation hotspots should book as soon as possible. Prices might rise by more than $200 a ticket in the weeks closer to spring break. Expect full flights and hotels and make contingency plans in case of flight cancellations. For budget-conscious travelers, be flexible. Midweek flights can be up to $100 cheaper per person. Wait to book big city hotels. Last-minute room deals can save you up to 25% and consider a staycation. One of the best ways to get an incredible deal when you do a staycation is to reach out to local hotels or accommodation providers. Ask if they have a geofenced rate. Hotels often will offer a lower rate to residents of the town, the community, sometimes even the state, to incentivize locals to stay at their accommodations. Meanwhile, international travel has also roared back with Asian destinations like China, Japan and Indonesia reopening post-pandemic and attracting crowds of young people eager to experience a new part of the world and take advantage of the strong dollar. When you add up hotel, eating out, Ubers to and from airports, the total amount of money you're spending to go somewhere in the U.S. might actually be the same amount you would spend going somewhere in Asia or Europe. Savvy travelers should plan out a complete budget, including the cost of taxis, rental cars, food and drink, and excursions. Tips to maximize your spring break without breaking the bank. If you're thinking about hitting the open seas, cruise lines are offering some big savings right now. Roller coasters, go-kart racing, water parks, not on land, but at sea. And with several new ships arriving this year, cruises can be found at all price points. Like this three-night cruise in the Bahamas for under 300 bucks per person. Or a seven-night voyage for two on the Mediterranean for 2900 As travel restrictions ease, families are ready to hit the high seas. Well, I think there was an appetite for people who really wanted to travel and really weren't doing it during the pandemic. Colleen McDaniel is the editor-in-chief of CruiseCritic.com. Why is cruising back in such a big way? Cruising is bringing new ships. They are loaded with amenities and things to do. Activities like go-kart racing or rock wall climbing, all these cool things that you can do ashore, you can now do on a cruise ship. Just how big is this wave of reservations? Celebrity Cruises had its largest booking day ever on Black Friday. Holland America up 20% from 2019. And Royal Caribbean had its biggest booking day in the company's 53-year history. Among the most popular destinations, Alaska and Northern Europe's British Isles, Greenland and Iceland. McDaniel says start by working with a travel agent, especially if you've never cruised before. And don't pick based on price. Tell the agent what you want to do. Pricing will be a part of it, but it shouldn't be the biggest factor because if you don't have that great ship, you're not going to have the perfect experience. If you're booking the cruise yourself, look for discounted gift cards on websites like Raise or CardCash.com. We found this one a $500 value for $430. If you apply several gift cards to your purchase, the savings really add up. So how do you make the most of your experience and save money once you're on board the ship? Well, to show you, I'm here on The Gem by Norwegian Cruise Lines. And with me, Stephanie Cardell. She's the Director of Communications. So, Steph, what should folks think about once they set foot on board? Sure. There's so much to do on board. Everybody loves to dine and eat when they're on board the ship. So make sure you go down and get your specialty dining package if you haven't done so yet. Same with your unlimited beverage package. You know, if you want to spend days around the pool um, having your favorite cocktail, make sure to do that first. And those packages tend to save you more money than if you bought a la carte. Absolutely. And then you have some tips on saving on the rooms too. 
yep. let's go check those out. Great. So Steph, what do you need to think about when it comes to accommodations if you're on a budget? It really depends what type of traveler you are, right? Or if you're traveling solo, we have studio state rooms, right? So they're designed and priced for the solo traveler. If you're looking to just spend um, more of your time outside, enjoying the pool deck, enjoying the bars, the entertainment, then an inside state room might be for you. Or if you're looking to spread out in more luxurious accommodations or if you have a large family, something like this, the three bedroom Haven Villa might be a great option for you. And you can split the cost of your traveling with another couple or some other friends. Absolutely. It's like having your apartment out at sea. Thank you. My pleasure. The cost of drinks can really add up on a cruise, but check out cruiselead.com. They have a drink calculator that can help you figure out which drink package to save you the most money. However you vacation, grab some me time. The best time to save on the spa when the ship is docked. You have a secret tip for saving at the spa. What's that? So on port days, there's always a special. So keep an eye out. You'll get a notice in your room, and that'll tell you what that special is for the port. And the better deals are as the cruise is getting closer to its end. Up next, sharing a home share. From planning to safety, what to figure out before your next dream vacation so it doesn't turn into a nightmare. And later, what you need to know about new subscription services at popular restaurants. That's all ahead on Consumer Confidential. Welcome back to Consumer Confidential. It's become an alternative to hotels and resorts renting a vacation home. And it could be a good way to save money. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to finding the perfect vacation home for your next trip. Need an escape from the daily grind? For your next family vacation, you could relax by the pool at this home in Port St. Lucie, Florida for $333 a night. Or watch the sunrise at this oceanfront condo in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for $507 a night. Or enjoy the view from the hot tub at this luxury chalet in Steamboat Springs, Colorado for $1325 a night. These rentals all big enough to share with another family. It's a popular travel trend as many look to give their wallets a break this spring. The average family of four now spends more than $4,500 on a vacation each year. But by buddying up at a home share, you can split the cost with others, saving you money while making priceless memories. Last year, Airbnb reporting family travel nearly doubled to 98% in the U.S. alone. And a recent Verbo survey finding this year, 57% of travelers plan to take trips more often with groups of friends. To rent a big, huge, you know, three-floor house or cabin would have not made financial sense. So splitting it with a family was perfect. Karen Ensley, her husband Will, and their daughter Sienna escaped to the great outdoors with some friends in the Pocono Mountains. After discussing their budgets, the two families searched Airbnb to find a spacious cabin within their price range. We wanted to make sure we had enough space so that the two families could be together but separate. Ensley says they took in the sights and the savings, as the outdoor toys included with the rental provided entertainment. The families also split the grocery bill. It ends up being cheaper than a hotel. But when vacationing, the phrase, the more the merrier, doesn't always apply. Travel preparedness expert Cheryl Nelson says before booking a shared space, discussing the details can help ensure everyone goes and comes back as friends. What about if you're traveling with another family on a shared vacation? What are some tips to make it out of that <laughs> intact? There's got to be some house rules that you set. Are there quiet hours? Agree on that. What about pets? Don't bring your dog if somebody else is bringing their cat. And kids, how are the kids going to play? Talk about the budget, how much space you need, and if you want to split the cost per family or per person. Nelson even suggests assigning rooms ahead of time. A lot of the times there's only one, maybe two master suites in the house. You don't want everybody fighting over that when they get there. Other topics to consider, how to split food costs, how much time to spend together and apart, sleep habits, and as Ensley learned, who does the chores? If one family's cooking, maybe the other one cleans that day and, and you kind of switch back and forth. When considering a home rental, Nelson says make safety a priority. Only rent from verified host. Read all the reviews about that property. You can also check out the surrounding area by entering the address on a street view map. And one more tip, you can see the recent serious crimes there if you put the address into crimemapping.com. What are some red flags you should look for in a listing? If they don't provide any sort of picture of a doorway or external pictures, that might raise a red flag. Nelson shows us her first safety check. Does the rental have a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide alarm? You can also bring your own. 
This one's portable. All you do is plug it into the wall. She then uses a flashlight to look for hidden cameras. Ideally, I'd close the blinds, lights would be off. And as I'm lounging, I would just start pointing this at vents. If you see anything reflecting back at you, there might be a hidden camera in there. And she checks drawers for sharp objects and drugs or chemicals. Tips to keep your home share travels full of good, clean family fun. Still to come, how to avoid paying extra airline fees and later, deal or no deal, how to find the best prices at your grocery store. We're back after this. Welcome back. Consumers are already battling inflation, and now it seems we're also seeing more of those so-called junk fees charged by airlines. NBC's Tom Costello spoke to our friends on the Today Show about a new policy that could make flying cheaper. It's a travel hassle familiar to any family traveling with kids. Either shell out the extra cash for seat selections up front or try to wing it at the gate. Now United Airlines is rolling out a new seating policy to make the skies a bit friendlier, allowing accompanying parents and adults to sit next to children younger than 12 without paying extra. That's a big deal for parents like Nathan Herrig and his family of four. It takes away one of the most stressful parts of flying, which is, you know, uh, what am I going to do with my kids on the flight? Along with the ticketing policy, United says it's also unveiling new technology that will open up more seats on its flights to help automatically keep younger children next to an adult in their party, giving access to regular economy seats and preferred seats if needed. No extra fee. It's not uncommon to see seat selection as much as 50, 60 or $70 per person. And so if you're talking about a family of four, that can run well over $200 just to reserve your specific seat. The new feature will be available to families purchasing either regular tickets or basic economy tickets, which typically have more restrictions. The move comes as regulators, lawmakers and the White House have taken sharp aim at so-called junk fees that airlines charge. We'll prohibit airlines from charging $50 round trip for family just to be able to sit together. Baggage fees are bad enough. Airlines can't treat your child like a piece of baggage. The airline industry says carriers try to seat families together, often at the gate, but families sometimes buy seats together that cost more. Experts say United's new boarding tool should remove some of the boarding stress for families. It's going to be better for uh, airline gate agents who don't have to try to play musical chairs. All right, Tom, some good tips, but if families are booking with other airlines outside of United, how can they avoid that CD yeah. fee? Yeah, let's walk through a couple of tips for you. Uh, first of all, you should try to call the airline in advance. If you're going ahead and booking online, First of all, try to see if you can book together. That may be difficult, but give it a shot. Call the airline in advance. Explain to them you're traveling with young kids. And if that doesn't work or if they simply can't help you, the agent at the gate, hopefully, at the airport can help you as well. And here's a good tip. If you're traveling with kids, try to choose maybe a seat, all seats in the back of the plane. Those usually don't fill up as fast, and usually those are not premium seats. It's easier to get seats together. Closer to the bathroom, yeah, too, by the way. Yeah. In that case, with little kids, not a bad thing. How about baggage fees? Because those can really add up, too, Tom. Well, you know, if you have status, if you fly a lot, usually your status will allow you to check a bag for free. But those airline credit cards usually will give you at least one, sometimes two bags for free. So consider that using a credit card for the airline that you're on. Also, compare the policies. Not all airlines charge to check bags. Southwest still does not. So you might want to be looking and considering whether that's a factor. And then if you want to try to avoid that checking the bag fee, you might want to try to carry on and then check the bag at the gate. However, your bag can't be so big it doesn't fit through the TSA x-ray machine. It's not just airlines that are tacking on those fees. Hotels, concerts, even banks too. So how can we avoid extra fees? NBC's business reporter Brian Chung recently shared some ways to cut down on costs. All right, so we're going to take it one step at a time by the by the numbers. Let's start with those dreaded banking fees. What are we working with here? Yeah, well, it costs a lot to use plastic Chanel. And the number I've got for you here is $29.80. Okay. That number comes from bank rate. That's how much it costs to overdraft. You don't have enough money in your checking account. The bank has to move from your savings account, and that's going to cost you a lot of money. So that make sure up. you have enough in your checking account. Yeah, but look, yeah. there's a lot of other fees that are associated with using bank services as well. Okay. ATM fees, $4.66. Per what? 
per transaction. That's also according to bank rate. So if you want to avoid that, try to stay inside your debit card network. Take a look at the back of the plastic to make okay. sure you know where to use it. And then there's also credit card late fees, right? <laughs> On top of the interest that you're going to pay for anything that's overdue, you're also yep. going to get this late fee of about $30. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is actually proposing under the Biden administration to cap that at $8. Really? And, yep, and the CFPB, again, it's a proposal right now, okay. but they say that could save Americans about $9 billion. And by the way, mm -hmm. Chanel, for all these fees, if you do face it, try to give your bank a call. Just say, hey, look, I'm really sorry about that. Maybe can you waive it? I've done it before with the overdraft Right, especially fee. if it's just one time. Exactly. And yeah, the worst you, they could do, say no. Say no. Yep, okay, exactly. to save that money. All right, next, let's talk about, this is a good one, the extra cost yes. we pay for cable yeah. and internet. <laughs> yeah, really expensive. And, and the number I've got for you right here is 11.3%. That's the estimated inflation that we've seen just since the beginning of the pandemic for your cable fees. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's on top of what Consumer Reports estimated was $450 in yearly cable fees that people are paying. So fees, and not just wow. the... Just well, the, that is actually the bill, but oh, it that's includes the bill. fees, which okay. I'm going to get to right here. Company imposed fees as part of that are about 24%, according to uh, mm -hmm. Consumer Reports. But I feel now, like it feel, you feel helpless. Like, you get the bill and you have all those fees on there. What are you supposed to do? Well, you, you, I mean, you can call the cable company and try to yeah. see if you can negotiate some of those fees, but there are things like, for example, modem rentals. They'll okay. say, you have to rent from us. That could be up to $15 a month. You could buy your own modem, your own router mm -hmm. from Best Buy, for example, and then yeah. Save yourself the monthly fee. Okay. And also watch out for cancellation fees. If you try to get out of a contract early, could be up to $200. But again, try to give your cable company a call. And also maybe consider cutting the cord if it's going to save you money just by streaming instead of buying a cable. But those streaming, those streaming services have all been Start jacking up. Yeah, all yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you got to do the math and try to see based off of what channels you want, whether or not it ends up working out. All right. It's crazy. All right, so if you actually get off the couch and yep. leave the house, we all want to do experiences. There's concerts, there's games, but the fees attached to ticketing is yep. also up. Dylan, so the number I've got for you is 27 to 31%. That's the average ticket fee. This is where we feel a lot of the pain. Mm -hmm. A lot of T-Swift fans will know this as well, right? <laughs> now, let's do the math, right? Average concert ticket, according to uh, Polestar, is $108.20. So with another fee on top of that, mm -hmm. that's going to be another $30 just right. to get into the stadium. Average NBA game, I'm a huge Brooklyn Nets fan. I know this for a fact, $94. But again, the fees are mm -hmm. added on top of that. It's very expensive just to get inside the Barclays Arena. And then the average discount theater tickets, this is according to Today Ticks Group. They're saying it's about $55. That's not just Broadway, that's nationally, mm -hmm. by the way. Again, you're going to face fees on top of that. So, no, what can you do for that? Well, one thing you can do is you can try to go directly to the box office. In many cases, you can get around these third-party ticket mm -hmm. resellers to get around the fee. And then also remember that you can actually try to join a fan club, for example. Okay. They might offer discounted tickets. Oh, that's a good idea. Well. You know what ticks yeah. me off is when you go and you buy your movie ticket online and they charge you a convenience yes. fee. Yeah, convenience <laughs> fee. What's up with what? that? What's so convenient yeah, about you're, that right you're, now? You have fewer cashiers because I'm buying online. Stop it! Anyway, uh... <laughs> Travel fees. Yes, yes. So what's the number? Well, there? look, I get worked up just as much about travel fees as well. Thirty to thirty-five dollars. That is the average airfare fees just for trying to pick your seat, just mm -hmm. to try to check your bags. Right. Things you can get around. Try to check the bag maybe directly at the gate. I've got other numbers for you as well. Airport car rentals. Another twenty-three percent more expensive to rent at the airport. Yeah. Oh wow! Consider taking an Uber into a downtown location, uh -huh. renting from the same place. Could mm -hmm. be a lot cheaper. Resort fees forty dollars. Can for you that. negotiate those? Eh, it's kind of tough. But the Biden administration is looking at perhaps mm -hmm. nixing these fees and then Airbnb. This is where it gets, I mean, everyone's experiencing this. 14.2% could be the fees on top of what you're quoted. Wow. Yeah. Check the card. Try to check out so you get a final mm -hmm. invoice and how much that's going to cost Brian you. Chung, great it's good advice. Thanks so it much. Yep. Coming up, how to stretch your dollars at the grocery store. Plus, what you need to know about new subscription services at popular restaurants. With more Americans turning to discount stores to cope with high food prices, many traditional grocery stores are trying to lure back customers by pushing their own store brands and expanding loyalty programs. Here's how you can find the best deals. In aisles all across America, grocery shoppers are doing a double take. That's not even a cart full of groceries. As inflation sent food prices soaring, now more than half of all Americans, a whopping 60%, prefer non-traditional stores. Wholesale clubs like Costco or super centers such as Target and Walmart are often the go-to destination for food shoppers. That's causing a shuffle on the shelves. Some retailers to stay competitive for consumers are going to put items that are staple items on sale. They're also upping rewards on loyalty programs. As the grocery wars heat up, traditional chains like Kroger are leaning into their ability to provide fresh produce and relying on reputation to establish their own brand loyalty. 
what we find is uh, customers going from national brand to our brands, and a customer is able to save 7 to 10 percent on a basket of goods when they buy our brands. They're also leaning into digital coupons, a big hit with shoppers. For us, our business model is designed to be successful regardless of the environment. The changing landscape can mean good news at the checkout. Stores like Aldi, which continue to expand, entice customers with cheap prices on popular brands. I think the prices are really good and they have a lot of good options. And I really like the frozen food section. I save about $100 at least a month. Discount stores are making a deep dent, too. I spent $35 on a week's worth of groceries at Dollar Tree. With one in five people shopping for groceries at Dollar Chains. They want you to see that they have the exact same quality of a name brand for much less. And often you'll see a comparison between the two prices. Two big stickers right next to each other. Retailers like Dollar Tree are even remodeling some stores to showcase groceries and kitchen staples and partnering with delivery app Instacart to reach new customers. With so many choices, if you want to keep your grocery budget in check, experts suggest jump on those buy one, get one offers for your essential goods and freeze what you don't use. Set up a meal plan for the week to limit overspending. And don't forget to take advantage of those loyalty programs that can cut costs in line. Take a beat before you go to the grocery store and really do the research. You will be so surprised how much money you can save. Now to a closer look at big changes happening in the food industry. Some restaurants are offering deals like subscription services and extra perks to keep customers coming back. NBC's Kaylee Hartung has the latest. From chicken to beef to eggs, the price you pay for food at the grocery store remains high. And restaurants, big and small, are feeling that same sting from inflation. Food is getting outrageous. Many businesses have been forced to pass on those costs to consumers, making the price you pay for dine-in and takeout meals more expensive. 8% more than you paid for the same meals last year. That ballooning bill, the main reason over 60% of Americans say they're choosing to eat out less often. I feel like I'm paying more money for either not very much food or not very good food. Now restaurants are trying to turn down the heat on inflation while still cooking up deals for their customers. Some restaurants are even offering subscription plans. At Asian food chain P.F. Chang's, patrons can now pay $6.99 a month for exclusive loyalty perks, including double reward points, jumping to the front of the wait list for a table, and free delivery. Industry insiders say that new revenue stream will help relieve some of the inflation stress on businesses. Have you all had to adjust your prices to reflect inflation costs? There's no secret that prices had to be adjusted, not only at our restaurant, but really everywhere, right? At this location in Los Angeles, employees say they're firing up more meals for P.F. Chang subscribers every day. Do you feel that people are really saving money by paying a subscription fee? I believe so. If you're a loyal customer and this is the place that you go to all the time, it's definitely worth it. At Panera Bread, a $120 annual subscription will get you into its unlimited sip club, where drinks and deliveries are available without any additional fees. Some smaller chains and local restaurants are thinking outside the box, offering inflation-conscious menus with options that are cheaper than a full-price plate. And restaurant operators are becoming pretty innovative in terms of how they operate in this extremely high cost environment. If you're looking to dine out without breaking the bank, look for daily specials, which often offer a side and a drink for less. Opt for a late lunch instead of a more expensive dinner portion. And if you plan to carry out, see if you can order directly online or through the restaurant's app to help avoid extra delivery fees. That's our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.